Hello and welcome to ClimbingArborist.com So in this video I'm going to do a review of the Husqvarna T536LIXP which is the battery powered top handle chainsaw um, Now if you follow my social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, that kind of thing you'll see that I've been posting a lot about this saw over the last year um, so I've owned it about a year now so I think I've really got a good grasp on doing a review of the saw I've you know I've used it in um, various different conditions I've used it um, to do you know a lot of pruning I've used it on some removals on some some wood that's getting into the size of the bar so I've kind of used it on quite a broad uh, spectrum of what I would use a top handle chainsaw for um, so let's start going over um, the saw itself so the saw itself without the batteries I'm just gonna put it on the scales um, and these scales tell me it weighs just over three kilograms so 3.16 kilograms um, then you've got a choice of batteries now I have both the BLI 200 battery and the BLI 300 battery now the 200 battery has 5.2 amp hours and the BLI 300 battery has 9.4 amp hours so there's, a, there's quite a lot of difference in amp hours <clears throat> but there's also quite a lot of difference in weight here um, the 300 is a lot heavier and it's actually quite a lot more expensive as well so over the last year I've figured so I, <clears throat> when I first bought the saw I kind of felt the weight of them put them in the saw felt the weight of the saw and thought I definitely want the 200 because it it makes the saw lighter it makes it actually feel balanced whereas you put the 300 battery in it and it just feels really kind of tail heavy so but then I ended up buying the 300 battery um, because I bought some hedge trimmers and I bought a blower and I thought like hedge trimmers when you're using them like you you constantly got the throttle on so they're gonna drain quite quickly so I thought I'd want the, the 300 battery now having used them for quite a while every time I, I go to the 200 battery first so I have two of these 200 batteries and I always always use the 200 because even in a hedge trimmer um, you know you want it as light as possible with the blower I want it as light as possible and because I have two batteries what I do is I take the charger with me to any job site and I plug it in, uh, I plug one of the batteries in at the client's house while I'm using the saw if if the battery is not already fully charged so there's always a battery on charge um, so I've never I never find that I run out of power so even having the the 200 battery with the, the the lower amp hours I never run out because there's one always charging and like it took me a while to figure out I could actually check, take the charger with me to the client's house but once I figured that out you know it doesn't matter if you've forgotten to charge it the night before because you've got the charger with you so um, so I, Personally, I so I have two of the 300 batteries that which I hardly ever use. They're a bit of a backup, um, but I think they're almost a hundred Canadian dollars more expensive than the 200 battery. So, if I were you and you're thinking about buying one of these saws, go for the 200 because it it's just it's lighter, so nicer to use. Um, and if you've got them on charge, you know it 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 doesn't really matter. Um, so I'll, I'll show the weight difference so the the 200 battery weighs 1.3 kilos and the 300 battery weighs nearly 2 kilos so uh, there's a there's a pretty good difference in in weight there probably like 40% heavier is the 300 battery right let's get to the saw um, let's start with the cons first so 
Compared to a gas powered saw, your gas um, or petrol if you're English, um, the one of the biggest differences here is uh, doing plunge cuts. For whatever reason, the way that the electric motor works, you can't really do a plunge cut with the battery powered saw. Um, you also can't you can't really feather the throttle like you can do on a on a on a petrol two-stroke chainsaw um, the throttle you know if you hold it in different positions like full throttle half throttle or whatever it, you can definitely get slower chain speed but it's not the same as a gas powered saw so um, those are I mean I wouldn't say maybe that's not a con yeah it probably is because Feathering the throttle sometimes is, is pretty nice, uh, especially because we're all used to using petrol two-stroke chainsaws. So, um, but I wouldn't say that it really makes that much difference. The plunge cut, maybe, um, but then again, you're gonna choose the battery saw for specific jobs. Um, so, it's probably not going to be too many occasions where you're going to need to do a plunge cut maybe if you've got a really you've got multiple branches and they're they're forking out from the same position and you want to get in and, and kind of take one out because you need to take one before the others so you need to plunge in you know that's a situation where you need a plunge cut and that's where it can get a bit tricky um, but other than that I can't really see the downside to this. Uh, I will mention one thing is that when I bought this saw, a lot of people told me you don't use it in the rain, um, which if you know where I live, I'm in the Pacific Northwest. I live in Vancouver, uh, BC, and it does rain an awful lot here. Um, so that was that was one thing. You know, everybody said, don't use it in the rain because the, the water gets into the electrics and then it, you know, it, it screws it up and it just stops working. Um, I can't say I've used it in the rain too many times. I definitely have used it in the rain. I, I, I do remember using it on one job where it was raining heavy. Uh, I've used it in the rain, like if it's light rain, doesn't seem to, to matter the saw, but I don't know if I would say I've been lucky that I haven't actually had those rainy days when I've used the saw, but there's been no problems whatsoever so far, touch wood. So I can't, um, I can't say the rain is a factor from my point of view, that's just what I've heard from others. Uh, okay, next. So yeah, let's move on to the pros, because there's many, many pros to this saw. Um, I think those are the only cons I can think of, but pros, there are a lot. So, I use this saw pretty much on a daily basis when I'm working. Um, Whenever I'm in the canopy, I'm using the saw a lot of the time for if I'm pruning, you know, if I'm pruning stuff bigger than what you'd want to be using your handsaw for. Um, so maybe like above, if I know I'm making a lot of cuts above like three inches, I'll, I'll definitely have this saw with me and use it for pruning. I'll do a lot of removals with this saw, like removing the branches, because where where I am based, um, there's a lot of coniferous trees, so we're quite often taking down western red cedar, Douglas fir, uh, some spruce, that kind of thing. So even if you're taking down a large tree, like really mature Douglas fir tree, the branches <clears throat> aren't ever gonna be that big really. So you can strip off all the branches with this saw, then get to take the top out. Um, and once you get down to, you know, like eight to 10 inches, then that's where I'm gonna switch out saws. Uh, it, it's gonna be different when you're doing a removal on, on a broadleaf tree. So say like a big mature oak tree, where yes, you're taking off the branches, but it has like big stems that you need to take back at the same time, then then you're gonna to have to decide way up the the benefits of taking you know a um, petrol two-stroke chainsaw like a 
200 201t um, and let's <coughs> let's say uh, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit this um, if you're comparing this saw it's not a direct comparison to like a MS 200 MS 201 the uh, Husqvarna um, T540 it's not a it's not a direct comparison to those sorts because those have got way more power and you can cut down larger pieces of wood um, a lot easier this you 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 could compare it to like a ms150 um, that kind of a, a small saw because the 150 is really nice and light pretty much similar weight as this um, the ms150 if you get a, a standard it's not got too much power to be blocking down wood so so this is you know very similar equivalent um, but where I you know if you've if you've got a choice of using a 200 or or this saw and all you're doing is removing small branches um, maybe you're stripping off like I say like a, a, a coniferous tree stripping off the branches this is way more beneficial than using a larger top handled saw because you just don't you don't have that weight like this you don't even notice you carrying it on your harness really whereas um the larger top handle chainsaws are actually quite a bit heavier so the weight is is one of the big factors obviously the noise um noise is a huge thing i still wear my ear must when i use this because you still have the noise of the chain whizzing round and for me that just that kind of certain frequency a certain pitch that sound i don't want to hear it without my earmuffs on so i still wear earmuffs but you've got a lot le a lot less noise uh, you you causing a lot less noise for the neighborhood uh, so you know i've i've actually used this uh, it's been beneficial a couple of jobs that i've started pretty early i've started you know say like seven o'clock and they're obviously noise bylaws um, and you don't really want to be if you can avoid it you don't want to be waking people up at that that kind of time not even you know eight o'clock so if you're if you've got one of these saws you can you can start pretty early and and you're not going to upset anybody uh, so that's a benefit then you've got you don't have to pull start the saw all you do, all you're doing to turn the saw on is pressing a button it's on you know so let me put the battery in okay right the saw is on so this is basically the saw if you compare it to a, a, a two-stroke saw this is idling right now you know and if when you think about that you think about how many times you you leave your saw idling if it's idling on your harness just because you know you're going to be using it again you know in a couple of minutes or in 30 seconds or you know you've got it idling blah, 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 which gets pretty annoying <laughs> um, if you if, if you're using the saw i i sometimes use this saw say say if i'm chipping up and i know i've got a small chipper so i need to um, remove some of the the branches where where they fork and that kind of thing and if I was using a two-stroke chainsaw, sometimes I would leave the chainsaw down near the pile of brush, and it'd there be there like skipping a skipping along the pavement, idling. Um, this you don't have that, so that <laughs> that is a benefit as well. Um, and like I say, this is this is idling now, as I like to say. Obviously, it's not idling, um, and there's no there's no pull start on this so a lot of people might not even think of that when you're thinking about benefits but as soon as you start using this saw you'll realize man i'm not i'm not having to pull start a saw like i don't know how many times you would do it when you're doing a removal um especially if you're really conscious of cutting the saw off so you're not leaving it idling you may be pull starting the saw like 200 times I don't, I, that's just a wild number I came up with from nowhere I don't, but yeah it's, let's say 200 times like doing that motion a couple of hundred times a day it's just one it's well you don't think about it until you've used one of these saws but one it's actually irritating um, you know 
repetitive strain I suppose um, and then so if you don't want to keep pull starting your saw all the time then you leave it leaving it leaving it idling so this just it's obvious that the benefits are there when when you you, know, you look at those two options um, the next thing is because you're not using fuel you're not get you're not breathing in those those fumes those two stroke fumes now i haven't noticed it particularly myself and i don't know if that's because i'm uh i'm just not that aware and that in tune with my body but a lot of people have said when they breathe in two stroke fumes that you know it makes them feel a bit funny uh, especially by the end of the day like they're mentally they're a little bit they're not quite with it and and i i do believe there is some data um showing this if you if you search online so breathing in two stroke fumes um this just eliminates that so there's none of that which once you've used the saw again you realize that is a huge benefit probably the biggest thing that i never thought about with all the battery powered tools that i own is the lack of vibration there's there's almost zero vibration on this saw the only vibrations you you get are from the chain cutting through the wood so it causes a little bit of a vibration but once you've used any of the battery tools you realize that most of the vibration on gas powered saws is coming from the engine itself uh, and it's not not that much of it is coming from the actual cutting of the piece so in an industry where we're using tools that cause vibrations all day every day using a tool that cuts down those vibrations by about 90 95 percent is is a huge benefit um huge huge benefit and it it makes such a difference that now when i go back and use like a a medium-sized chainsaw um, i really notice the vibrations way more than i ever did before so vibrations are a huge one um, the next thing is obviously you, we don't you don't have the the fuel that you're putting in so and if you're using your clients electricity to charge your batteries then there's the cost saving there because um, you know you'd think you're saving money on on fuel but then you're still paying to charge it with electric so i, I imagine that's cheaper but i don't know quite where the what the cost saving is but if you're charging at your client's house then um then it's free basically and it's funny um there's been a few times well quite yeah quite a number of times in my career where the client has said to me oh do you need uh, do you need power do you need power and i always think what a ridiculous question i'm not using like electric power tools um but then the last time somebody said that to me i was like oh yeah actually i do need power um uh, thank you very much plugged my battery in and um all is good so now i don't think it's such a ridiculous question anymore another um, another benefit to the saw is you've just got less maintenance um there's no spark plug that you that you need to change from time to time there's no there's no carburetor and no fuel lines that are going to break um no fuel lines going to split no carb that needs replacing no air filter that needs cleaning so it's you know you still need to take the the cover off from time to time clean out all the sawdust and and, and the build up in there but apart from that um and apart from cleaning out the guide bar it's pretty much zero maintenance one thing i will say is that make sure the chain is always like really really sharp because because you're using battery power um you really notice that the you really notice if you've got a, like a slightly dull chain slight, slightly blunt chain that it really does have an effect like because on a petrol chainsaw you you kind of um you let the engine take up the slack a little bit if you've been if you've been slack on 
sharpening your saw or if it's you know lost its edge or something so always make sure that it's tip top condition um, really sharp chain but I suppose that that should be said for any professional arborist you should always make sure your chain is nice and sharp so the most common question that I get asked all the time with this saw how long does the battery last and it is a uh, kind of a silly question it's like asking how long is a piece of string it's you know there's no there's no answer I can't say oh the battery lasts one hour or the battery lasts five hours it depends on what you're doing depends on the how many you know the, the type of wood you're cutting into uh, the density of the wood the size of the wood everything like that uh, what I can say is that if I'm doing some kind of pruning or even removal where the branches are like you know three four five six inches I've done I've done removals with this where the batteries lasted all day um, until I'm gonna switch out my saw so I think the the battery life is brilliant on this the, to say that a battery can power a saw like this that can do the the job that you need to do while in the canopy is absolutely fantastic. Um, where the battery is really going to start getting drained is when you start cutting into larger wood. Um, and when I say larger wood, I'm probably talking probably talking about s maybe seven inches and above. You start so I've done a few removals with this, done a few small, medium-sized removals, and I made a video on doing a. a a cherry tree removal that had I think f four stems if I if my memory serves me correctly and as soon as you start piecing down cutting into the wood um, if it's dense wood like cherry and if the cuts are, you know like seven inches or above um, it, it really starts to drain the battery down so there's no right answer to how long the battery lasts but it is fantastic for pruning, doing smaller cuts. As soon as you start making bigger cuts over and over again, the battery is going to drain pretty quick. Um, so to summarize, this saw is absolutely fantastic. And I, like I say, I use it on a daily basis. If, uh, if it was rubbish, I wouldn't be using it so often. And um, I recommend it to everybody I speak to all of my friends I say you got to get one of these saws um, price wise it's fairly pricey when you first start out because you have to buy the saw um, with which come which you know it doesn't come with the batteries so the cost of the saw is probably similar to the cost of uh, a comparable uh, two-stroke saw but then you have to buy the batteries and the charger so the battery you know it's pretty expensive and then the charger too but if you if you're gonna go down the route that I've gone down and buy quite a few of the battery powered tools um, you you know then you start only having to buy the bodies of each power tool and so it it, it works out I don't I wouldn't say cheaper but it, it it's not like you're having to buy batteries and chargers with every single power tool you buy so um, I think this is an absolutely fantastic tool. Um, hopefully I've covered everything. Um, I'm, I, I'm sure that I haven't covered all your questions, um, but this is a brilliant tool and I'll be using it every day until it breaks. Thanks for watching. Don't, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, uh, put a comment in the, in the box below and um, thanks for watching, much appreciated. See you on the next one.